I, I guess the first thing I want to say is like, dude, it's about time. Yeah. I mean, we've been we've been talking for like, God, what's it been like a year now, dude? Because I was going back in uh, uh, my videos and everything, my my older videos. I'm like, yeah, no, we were definitely talking in season one. <laughs> oh yeah, I found you early on because when it was all coming out, I was like excited about it, and I saw literally nobody covering it. Yeah. And then your channel <laughs> popped up finally because I was searching for it, and I was like, thank goodness. So I immediately just started interacting with you because I was just happy to have found someone else. <laughs> and that's like one thing is that it has shown how many fans are still out there. Because like, again, this this show, I mean, I don't really know anybody in like my personal area that's watching this show. And then Me you know, when, when I started uh, uploading the videos, I was like, wow, like the same thing, like another dude's doing it. And then like I noticed that like all the people that were commenting on my videos were commenting on your videos and it just started off as this as this like whole community. Especially through time with like this season, I was like, well, I mean, we share pretty much like the same kind of like audience. Like this is just something that ha that needs to happen. Like, yeah. It's it's just like a matter of time before this was gonna happen. <laughs> uh season three got confirmed by really? one of the producers. This yeah, is the first I'm uh, hearing about it, so was his name Lee Lee Morton or something? I think that's one of his names, the producer. Okay. And I guess he confirmed that like a third season was on the way. So I thought I, that I might wondering. be the case because yeah, I was like, well, I, I know they did like two seasons now. They've done a movie. Like I don't know how long this is gonna go before he plans to do like King of the Hill. Yeah, because that, that's, that's why works. I was thinking they were gonna do more because of the announcement of King of the Hill and the fact that it feels like, especially since there's only the six month gap, that, that I feel like they made the movie season 9 and season 10 maybe not finish some of the episodes of season 10 and use that six months to finish them but i feel like it was mostly all done at once and that they were able i since, since they're now doing digital that maybe they can do it a lot like faster and cheaper and that if that's the case and it's been pretty successful even though like no one like you're saying locally i can't find many people watching it but in terms of online it seems to be watched enough that uh uh, they've done uh, announced King of the Hill, and I figured they'd be announcing a new, a new season. Uh, but there might be a bigger gap because they're actually, unless they've been still just working behind the scenes, he's probably just constantly working. Yeah, because that's another thing. Like you gotta, you gotta think like how much they work. I mean, like you said, in a six months gap, my gap, we've gotten the movie, we've gotten like, like thirty episodes total now. Oh yeah, this season. So I mean. And then, then for them to confirm a third season, like he's obviously hard at work with with this, and I don't know. I I, I just I love the passion behind it because obviously the last revival that was in like what 2011 or something. Yeah, I missed on that one. Long. I had no idea about that one. <laughs> yeah, and even now, like I watch, I go back and watch some of those episodes, and I'm like. I mean, this is definitely the more successful revival, especially with like the movie that they did and everything did the universe. Like that was really successful. That got really good reviews and everything. So I think it was just a matter of like testing, testing things out and seeing how it went. And I don't know, it seems to be, do yeah. to be doing pretty good. It, it seemed like an experiment. And once season nine was as successful as it was, it was a go ahead. And then he's like, okay, we can finish these other episodes now. And then they had some new strong ideas for season 10. Cause even though, People have been mixed on it. I think the Anderson Ward stories, I just like that he's adding something different and creative <laughs> into the mix. That even if they're not all like laugh out loud, like funny, I like the Anderson character. And I, that's just been a nice little addition besides just having the um the side cutaways that just have to do with their commentary. Uh, they had the one <laughs> with the flag. <laughs> <laughs> what was I the love that episode. Ballot? Stolen Valor. Yeah, Stolen Valor. Uh, we, when are we going to get Todd? I mean, we got Stewart back in the last season because of the I was going to talk to y'all about that because it's like, there's been some newer kind of side characters that randomly pop up, but it's like, why not just bring back Todd? And I was even thinking about, what what's the coach's name? Oh, God, uh, Coach Buzzcut. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking it's now that they're in the, the future, he boy. was such a rage machine. I feel like <laughs> now he would be like, someone who has to be like calm because he might have like a heart attack if he keeps acting that way so, so now good, he's like uh, has a medical condition that he can't get angry and they would have like beavis and butthead pushing his buttons you know what i'm saying and he's trying not to get pissed off because he we might die the, we were watching the episode recently where they sell the candy bars and yeah uh the, the candy the tutor dude like slaps him in the face is like all right mr candy ass you made one fatal mistake 
<laughs> and then when he's just telling Beavis to kick him in the jimmy. <laughs> harder. <laughs> do it harder. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I know that. Yeah, deal. I know exactly the episode you're talking about. <laughs> harder. Yeah. It's, it's so good. I'm, I'm like, where's Todd? Where's Coach Buzzco? We got Stewart in the past season for the yeah. kidney. We got Van Dreesen and everything. Um, we got Mr. Anderson. Yeah, that's the only thing. Like, we actually have now got adventures with it's Mr. True. Anderson. Like, the, I just couldn't believe they actually went on a trip, a hunting trip. Just that concept had me laughing just because it's like, Anderson, why? <laughs> but it's yeah. just the running joke of nobody. <laughs> now that the time jump and people are older, they're like, don't recognize them. <laughs> Y'all are Buford and Bernardo, not like those other two guys. <laughs> and he's done that, like, the whole, uh, that's like a running joke, like, the whole show. There was another character that, that Jacob brought up, which, uh, the principal, yeah. Kind of oh, like yeah, 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 I yeah. feel like he would just have a heart attack. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> in, the, in the older, in the original show, like, he would just, like, every time he'd get mad at them, he'd be, them, he'd be like, shaking and like, yeah. oh, you little bastards. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, just to see how alive the fan base still is and how, like, much of a community everybody seems. It's just, it's just so great to, like, in every comment, everyone's just, like, dropping references and yeah. saying stuff. <laughs> like, like for example, like, it was in one of my videos that someone commented, and they're like, oh, yeah, uh, a third season has been converted to be in development. I'm like, oh. Well, thanks for that, man. Yeah, yeah, and, I um, get heads up too. I remember when someone gave you the heads up of the new trailer, and you like, oh, yeah, so like, crap. Dude, yeah, they're so on top of it. The people for, start for... telling me like the names of the episodes like as soon as they like drop and stuff like that. Like, yeah, like I remember uh, someone commented on like one of my old Beavis and Butthead videos from like last season. They were like, "Dude, where's your trailer reaction for the new season?" I'm like, "What the hell are you talking about?" <laughs> what? And then like six <laughs> hours ago, a trailer dropped. I'm like, "Well." Yeah, thanks, dude. Heads up. <laughs> like, it's just, it's so good to have, to feel like this show is still relevant. Yeah. Right after I did uh, the movie, Beavis of <laughs> Do the Universe, my, there was a lightning storm, and my um, computer capture card and my PS4 got destroyed in a lightning storm. Oh, oh no. no! So I had no equipment. All of a sudden, well, I did. I so I had a um a laptop that was like a notebook laptop that barely had any power to like record or do anything, and I had this knockoff cheap capture card that was really shitty. It was the first one I bought, just trying to find something to use when I was early on uh, trying to play video games and like record it. And so, yeah, my my expensive, like, laptop capture card, PS4, got destroyed. And so, all of a sudden, the show was coming out. Oh, and I was like, I, on my notebook, it couldn't run. I used DaVinci Resolve to edit. And on my notebook, I could, it wouldn't even run DaVinci Resolve. <laughs> During last season, season nine, if you look at my channel, it's like a bunch of views and episodes. And maybe, like, every five episodes, there'll be a movie reaction. I think I did, like ray and hell rays are but it was because it would took me forever to edit that because i was using a crappy computer with a program that was really slow beavis and Bud was a godsend because the episodes were only 20 minutes and so with the shitty equipment i could actually record and edit it you know me and you i mean we go we go back for a while now and it's yeah. like you're the only other person you know <laughs> that was doing this we just connected over that and it was just something that just fell into place man yeah like it I just it just it. felt right this, this is exciting because, again, I, I saw the teaser for this, but I know you guys haven't seen it, so I'm not going to spoil anything. Yeah, but... I've seen nothing, and uh, this is exciting. We've been talking about this collab for a while, and I'm, I'm excited to get into this, man. All right, guys, we're back. The next day, we had some issues yesterday, so we've watched this episode before, but we didn't want to leave you guys hanging, and we really wanted to rewatch them again anyway, so... We're watching these episodes for the second time for you guys. I got Jacob here from JTJ Reviews, and I got The Pragmatic Attic, and uh, we're gonna do this. Very good, yeah. Quite popular, yeah. Droll, very droll, yeah. I love this. This is something that caught us by surprise yesterday, because we've seen, like, old Beavis and Butthead on here, and we've seen even, like, Beavis with the fire in the first season, but, like, 
seeing these guys get their own like introduction, knowing that they're gonna get their own episode, is was such a surprise. And they were laughing. They're like have a little dialogue, you know. <laughs> it's quite jocular. Yeah, I love That's it. a great one. <laughs> I want to see more of right, this yeah, universe, though. Favorite. Hopefully, in the next season, whenever we get it. Yeah, seriously. Surely to reward us for our good work and many achievements in space. <laughs> Frame leaders. <laughs> Drink yes. Yes. All right. So there's Stewart's <laughs> mom, Todd, Principal McVicker, Van Dreesen, Coach Buzz, got Daria. <laughs> My girl Daria, hell yeah. Indeed so. Where is the old burger world manager? That's all we're missing. Guilty. 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 Who's that guy supposed to be? Okay. <laughs> Thoroughly at odds with the okay. geological theory of law. Well put, smart Todd. You were supposed to have spent the last Smart time. Smart time. Smart time. Universes and what have you. But all he's so done bad. is run up an account on space nodules. This reminds me of Bill and Ted when they go in to the defense, future that worships them. We were observing the universe where <laughs> Beavis and Butthead are in middle age. Yes, at the height of their powers. And now the matter of your punishment. Your sentence is death. Okay. And you will be permitted to live on the following condition. You must quit screwing around and successfully complete one scientific mission. We'll go to Earth-1, the planet they call Normal Earth, and abduct a human for scientific experiments. God, this is such a good reveal. (laughs) Even such a simple task is a setup for failure. (laughs) Yeah, and I love how that's like the whole joke is that like, they're called smart babies and butthead, but it's like, when you look at it, they're so just as stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, they've even died this season. I swear, they, I, they died from that comet crash, didn't they? That's what I thought, too. Yeah. <laughs> I love this, too. Seeing them comment. I forgot about this, yeah. actually, that they commented this video. And Mama don't get dressed up for nothing. Ah, yes. So country music has an academy? <laughs> yes, they do. Perhaps we could teach there if they don't already have instructors in non-gravitational propulsion or advanced mathematics across fractional dimensions. We would instantly be the smartest professors at the Good country music academy. <laughs> for humans are stupid. <laughs> yes, very stupid. Look at this one, trying to wrestle a cow. <laughs> humorous. <coughs> Quite humorous. Which one is the human? And I, lo- which one I love is your voice. Cow? Look at this one, trying to wrestle a cow. Quite jocular, yes. <laughs> that one appears smarter. He must be the cow. Quite jogular. Please stop, smart buddy. He's walking to the This is like the definitive stereotypical why, Marlboro imagery. <laughs> This yes. This video also makes me want to worship the man they call Jesus. Yes, yes, indeed, yes. They have finally made music for The man they space. call Jesus. Oh Both of us from the heartland of space. The music's turning them into good old boys. <laughs> in this video. Yes, yes. It is a veritable intergalactic festival of sausage, smart. Ah, yes, yes. So called because an intergalactic sausage looks like a space penis. Yes, it does. Yes. Quite humorous. <laughs> And a galactic Notice sausage. The females Too are many becoming dudes. intoxicated. <laughs> it is part of their ritual of scoring. On this planet, the slut is shame. Oh, this is what they're talking about the slut. Yeah, they yes. slut shame. Your mother is <laughs> a slut. I had non procreational sexual intercourse with your mother. Thank you, smart butthead. I am honored. <laughs> Thank For you. On our planet, we have realized long ago that the slut is not to be shamed, but to be honored. Yes. And your mother is quite honorable. Again, thank you, smart butthead. It is said that there are more men Again, than inside you, your mother butt. than there are in the entire universe, diameter of the universe. <laughs> Let us talk more about this video, smart butthead, and not of my mother. It says the cowboy's wife. <laughs> he I still starts to get pissed. <laughs> yeah, you can see how he's like getting, the wife getting to get to that point. But he's like, <laughs> <laughs> the... all right, smart butt. Let's not talk of my mother humorous. anymore. <laughs> yes, yes. Humorous in the way of the belt of the board. Humorous, quite humorous. <laughs> the more they try to be different, the more they're just the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like BB-8 mated with the Jedi Starfighter. <laughs> yes, yes, let it be so. We must find a human to abduct, Smart Butthead. Smart Beavis, observe. And now oh, no. the winner of the 35th annual Chicken <laughs> Oh, that's why he has the Burger King crown. <laughs> let us seize him and take him to our ship. Humorous, but also menacing, yes. Yes, yes, merciful and sinister as well, yes, yes. <laughs> It's that luck is wow. Shot. <laughs> I'm just gonna go get a couple two more beers out of my car to wash it down with. A couple two more beers. <laughs> Thank you. I love Anderson. Anderson. 
I love that he's been a big focus of this season. Grabs one. Dude, yeah, he, he's brought it this season. We salute you, O Royal One. Are you boys in one of them fraternal <laughs> organizations? My daddy was a proud member of the Elks Club. You must come with us. He thinks they're, an, they're a frat. Well, all right. You know, I oh, always like wondered what you got to do to get invited toga party. to join the Elks in this town. Toga. That's what I love is how he's just you, following them. <laughs> Doesn't think anything well, of it. Yeah. Of yours must be a he's so job. casual about you it. You do this yourself or have it done? For you are now our captive. <laughs> <laughs> Huh. <laughs> that fetal that position. Be all right now. Yep. That was another whoopsie daisy. That boy gonna be all right now. Trying it again. Oh! Look how loose his jaw is. That's what I love about this yeah. season too, or like this revival is the it. animation. Just a hell scream. <laughs> oh, we got we got a uh, ads now. Uh, yeah, I got Sean Pat. Um, I got Stifler and. The doo doo fuck the pie on my Oh, yeah, yeah, you got that American pie DoorDash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, do you like those movies? I, I like, well, I, I, was in, I was in high school when they came out. Honestly, dude, they're like, they're just like staples of like my middle school years. Oh, okay. I, I think my favorite one's American Wedding, the one that where Stifler is kind of the main character. Like, I love American Wedding. I think that's the funniest one of the trilogy. What I like about American Wedding is it feels so much more off kilter. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's just them in this one setting. And it's just, it's, it, again, like you said, it's like Stifler's movie. Yeah. And him and Finch switch and <laughs> roles pretending to be each other as fantastic. And then the whole, like, gay club dance-off is, like, one of those it's memorable scenes. It's so good, scenes. man. <laughs> it's so good. Like, there's so many iconic scenes in the, in a we in the wedding one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very well, smart Beavis. We shall on. now perform scientific experiments <laughs> on this human. Does that mean... Probe his I love it because it's that like they it have all these gadgets all to talk this way, Prepare where it's like they're smart, but at the same time hmm. they have those mannerisms of the human have? I believe one. <laughs> How many anuses does it have? <laughs> the one or two. I want that. Switch is, There's no <laughs> switch for more. There's only ever one no, or two. I'm telling you, man. I, I want to know who they've abducted before. <laughs> I think the machine is broken, smart butthead. Do you know how to fix it? <laughs> well, I could probably no. get that working for you again. <laughs> Here Nine we go. times out of ten, what you're looking at <laughs> oh, is a boy. bad motor coupling. I love that. Nine times out of ten. Capacitor <laughs> 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 seems good. That's Even on it. other planets, they still lie. have you know, problems with motor very coupling. Very advanced, <laughs> he's smart because he's fixing some pretty it. advanced yes, technology. Advanced to us, but remember to them, they bought it used from their uncle or something. So to them, it's like a '96 Nissan. I just love how this is like a ship from another like dimension. He's just like, oh, well, this. Seems to be the problem. Nine times out of ten, it's this right here. Your <laughs> it's like... yeah, well, then it's probably all metric. Oh, He's not even freaking out handling the problem. flubber. <laughs> we just got to tighten that up. Right. Just blow on you it like a Nintendo car. See, you take this into the shop, and they see you got a custom van from Italy. Into take this into the shop. It needs all kinds of parts and run the price up on you. But it's just a loose housing. He's yeah. saying stuff yeah, that sure just does. like. So what's this like? His character anyway? is so honest. It seals your yeah. doom. What now? It seals your doom. That's probably the, the first time they well. understand what they said. I wipe his memory with an emulator. Look at this device. You might see a bright light. Men in black flash. What now? <laughs> Look at what now? Oops, I missed. Where am I? Are you boys all right? What is this device? I do not remember it. It seems I can It's a double it. anus massager. Yeah, <laughs> do you remember what this button does? And, and again, dude, of course, Beavis is the one to get probed. Like, oh, yeah. Why? Of course. Yeah, at least he's having fun. I don't know, man. Sir, do you remember how to turn this machine off? <laughs> Well, I don't need to join the Elks Club that I like bad, how I tell you what. <laughs> that sounds like the kind of I don't need to join the Elks Club. He's like, that's a bit much for me, I'm outy. I don't want to see what they do with that moose lodge. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I remember who I, I am now, and it's making it worse. <laughs> he 
He's so great. I love it. I love it. I think people were a little mixed at first about him being more focused on, like, when the first Anderson War stories, I was seeing, like, mixed reactions in the comments, but, like, it seemed to grow on people, like, throughout the season, and I think people, like, really started to enjoy it. Right, and it's, like, it, I don't know, again, like you were saying, like, I just respect it so much that they're putting so much thought into Anderson. Yeah, like, he's not just this character who's getting shit, you know? He, he seems like he's an actual priority yeah. this time they're around. They're including I, more, I but staying true to his character. In the last War Stories, he says something at the end. He's like, well, we'll have to save that for another story. So I'm like, okay, well, they're obviously, we're, we're going to get more. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I, I love that they're, like, talking about his his background and his origins <laughs> if you want to call it that yeah and that it's led up to this like first sequence and the finale because <laughs> it does yeah, feel like a... that was all a setup for this abduction sequence <laughs> it's just such a good idea for like a storyline like how much backstory he's getting it's surprising how much of this season feels like it's canon yeah <laughs> oh boy let's go you said you could see it um, what? The concept of this one is really interesting because it seems like both sets of characters are just like the kid and then Beavis and Butthead both don't want to be here uh, in the situation. and But they're like stuck in it the whole time and it's like how did they end up in it when they don't seem to really like each other? And then the yeah. whole time, it's just like, they're just it wanting makes... to get out of the situation, but they're riding through, because they're both trying to get to the their inevitable end goal. <laughs> and it's like, you know, throughout the episode, they're even, like, there's that quote from Bob where he's like, Cody, we don't like this any more than you do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But once we can play our game, we can leave. This can that, all that be really, over. That really summed up the whole, and it's like, like, situation the whole time. Yeah, it makes you think, like, why are you guys in this situation to begin with? Like, they probably, literally, it just seems like they saw that he had, like, a PS5 and just, like, forced their way into the situation, probably was just, like, bugging that dude to death to try to, like, hang out to play video games. Either that or it didn't completely, like, hit him until they were already over, like, wow, these guys are fucking menaces. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Like, there's so, there's so much to think about, like... He How might the be the only you... kid in the neighborhood that they can take advantage of now. Since Stuart's gone, this kid's like the new Stuart, like you said yesterday, I think. <laughs> yeah, the only thing I'm, like, curious about, we were talking about this yesterday, is, like, obviously he was uh, in a previous episode, and obviously, like, a third season is more or less confirmed to be on, on the way. Yeah. I wonder if he's going to be coming back, since they brought him in a past episode, and now he's got his own now with, with uh, the boys. I wonder if he's going to be back in a, in a future season because it's like in a way he does feel like that replacement for Stewart, but at the same time Stewart had this charm where it's just like you felt bad for him like yeah. wow you guys want to hang out with me that's cool so and it's like I, I, like uh when, when uh they're throwing like that party Stewart like shows up at the door hey guys i'm psyched Stewart. what the <laughs> hell are you doing here and like it's just they just they just treat him like such shit like he's just so like, the fact that people want to talk to, to him, that's all that matters to him. And this guy, it's like, it seems like he's aware of of, of these guys. That they're just not good. And he's just like, Mom, get yeah. this guy out of our house. I think what they are doing is setting him up to be kind of a reoccurring the neighborhood kid they interact with. But I think they're trying to not, like, copy store and have, like, maybe a different interaction between the two that's more yeah. adversarial or where they're always like stuck together but they don't like each other is going to be a new reoccurring thing where they might end up <laughs> in situations and maybe it'll lead to them being in a more thing where they're trying to fuck each other over or something you know it seems like they want to have that like idea where it's like there is this kid in the neighborhood and well however it goes down them like that person with beavis and Bud is just not going to be good it seems like they're not just trying to like replace Stuart. they're trying to like flash out a new storyline, exactly. which, which I really respect. Exactly. Hell yeah. Start okay. The start slowly act like Beavis and Butthead. Yeah. <laughs> Again, there's a lot to take in with this episode, but yeah, let's, uh, let, let, let's... Cody, you think we could come over here and play Cody, your game? Name. We've been watching... I love how that's how it starts. Cody, you said we could come hey, play your game. I didn't say you could play it. I said you could see it. I did see it. What? What? It's called seeing. Yeah, I want to shoot guys in the butt. Yeah. Are those people down there? I hate you guys. Cody, 
I think they're chips. You suck. You suck. <laughs> Check, checkers and or checks and pretzels. Friends. Checks mix. What friends? Oh, this is yikes. wonderful. <laughs> what Cody, friends? Why don't you invite your new friends for dinner. <laughs> Okay. Do you like broccolini? So he wanted to gloat like with his video game and show it to him and not let him so play, but it backfired on him. That's what happened uh, with Cody. Sir, we're just terrible. And this is what I love too is like seeing them eat Cody. like an actual meal. Like they're like poking the meat and shit. Exactly. He's like kind of a butt. We're gonna do they're too confused to eat it. Salmon. You've never seen salmon before. Help me in the kitchen a minute. It's because all they eat is like nachos. True. Get out of love it. house. We're not leaving until we play the video game, you butthole. That's yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> no matter how much this place sucks, we will stay until we can shoot those guys in the butt. Yeah. They just want to shoot a guy, guy in the butt. Go. One guy in the butt each. <laughs> we <laughs> I love that one guy in the butt each. Okay, then. <laughs> yeah, Seconds for everybody. It. Mom, can be some butthead so girl the video game? <laughs> like, right now? Before we have screen time. Family time. Oh my goodness, I forgot. Oh, my. oh god. This is so good. <laughs> this is sad. The what's on their faces. It's like what I love about this is like it feels like one of those filler scenes, but so much is happening in it. it okay, we'll get back to that in a minute. We gotta talk about this cut cutaway. Uh, <laughs> oh boy. We great... need to see this go down again. Yeah, this is fantastic. I like how this guy says nothing. It's like you he well, knows. that's the whole joke. Yeah, he's there to be the juxtaposition. Be in a butthead episode. <laughs> against that's their the worst song sanity. I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> what I love about it, no it, spoilers, is, song, no? is that it's so comic, but it's song, it, the situation yeah, goes so overboard. It's got, like, yeah. notes and it's from and something that's supposed to something. be so peaceful to begin with. Yeah, and even Beavis is claiming that like, it's comic. Sounds. Remember last to, season like, how Beavis just destroyed down. the TV? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Beavis, just sounds can't calm you down. You need a song to calm you down. No, you don't. It's calming me down, and it's not a song. What's your problem? It's calming My me problem down, is it's I'm not sick a song. Of sitting next to you being wrong all the time about everything. Yeah, well, I'm sick of you. <laughs> Telling me I'm wrong like, all the time. This yeah. is where it starts hey, to be like, wait a minute. Crap. It's supposed to be but coming, he's claiming up. it's coming, and Davis, they're just having a meltdown. I, I love it. I love the whole joke. Of you if you ever talk to me like that again. Well, let me say it, it again. It does kind of sound up. calming, though. You're wrong, <laughs> and I'm tired of you giving me crap all the time. The calming sounds <laughs> bring out it. all the roommate issues. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This about it. <laughs> oh my god. This goes down in such a savage headbutt. It, it, it escalates for this, so far. No, oh, no, you don't. No, you don't. You're and I love like the cut away speed just going. It just keeps cutting back to the, <laughs> the background. It's such a like good. WWF. Breaking the table. Yeah, it's such a good piece of comedy. <laughs> that reminds me of the season where they were messing around with one of those things and met Buddha. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't He's getting try. dragged off screen. Oh, no, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> Beavis. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> that was some damn aggressive Beavis. Oh. <laughs> I want to know what Beavis was trying on Butthead. I know. Uh, <laughs> and it just sits on this. Uh, <laughs> what's that? Uh. Butthead's all, don't even what try that. <laughs> What's that? Uh, I don't know, but this song sucks. <laughs> He's still claiming it's a song. Yeah. The cycle continues. I don't think that's a song, but it. <laughs> Damn it, Beavis. Can be okay, but this is what I was saying. What I love about this is it feels like a filler scene, but like this, it's like, why are they doing that? They're just dropping puzzles. <laughs> the sugar, and there's no reason for it. Pieces just, like sugar cubes. <laughs> and you can just hear them. Who I know are very important to you. This piece looks like it has a schlong. <laughs> <laughs> They love it. Cody, you didn't tell us your friend was a comedian. See, and this is what we were saying yesterday. Is like, it reminds me of the pranks episode we got this season, where it's like, they're just being bad influence, but everyone is seeing them as, like, good influence. <laughs> can I just go along with it? Whoa. <laughs> 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 
See, Cody never tells us the cool teen lingo like boing. Oh we oh, have God. to be his friends. Oh, oh man. Boing. Yeah, that, that there is a real boing. nice boing. Mom. Oh, my boing, God. Boing, oh. That is a real <laughs> nice <laughs> boing. Oh, God. <laughs> Whoa. Your mom's got wood. Yeah. It's, it's that perfect, like, yeah, they're probably gonna like representation of, like, want to be her parents. Trying to be cool, yeah. And it's just coming off as cringe. Such a good Why don't you two spend the night? Wait, what's happening? We can finish the puzzle and then play Riz. Uh, no. <laughs> we want to play some video games. Yeah, yeah, we want to shoot guys in the butt. You can play all day tomorrow. Cody's got the Dang PJs it. he's grown out of. <laughs> The oh, man. Those PJs. Uh, the dog. When did those ever sucks. fit him? <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> I was having trouble figuring out how old he was, how he's treated. It's like, how old is that guy? What I love about this season is seeing like all the different wardrobes <clears throat> that Beavis and Bayad have. I mean, we've seen him with the scrubs and the um the psych ward. Okay. We we <laughs> the acupuncture stuff with like the fork and the Umbrella. <laughs> Hellraiser Beavis. Yep. <laughs> that was great. And I'm doing the, the music. The thing. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, yeah. I can play Enter Sandman. Enter Sandman. That's what it was. <laughs> there's just like, there's so many good quotes that are just so throwaway, but they come off so natural because it's Beavis. Yeah, yeah we're going to shoot a guy in the butt. I wonder how the rest of the night went. Let's all go down to the park and enjoy this sunny weather. What? Just leave, please. Sorry, Cody. We don't Just like leave. this any more than you do. But we cannot leave until we... One of the best quotes game. of the whole episode. Seriously. Yeah. I'm gonna shoot a guy in the butt. But since it's a special occasion... Oh, you man. Know, you friends, that looks bomb-ass, though. How would you do Oh, dude, so yeah. Cool. I've been thinking about it ever since yesterday. It's I kind of want to try it. <laughs> Oh my god. Whoa. Oh boy. This is such a good oh, escalation. If you feel that build up, you know what's gonna happen. <laughs> we deserve this after he ate all that sugar in that other episode and did it. This is gonna be crazy. Cool. I love that quote. This is gonna be cool. <laughs> like, you know what's Hello, coming. Can I talk to you for a second? <laughs> oh no. It's time to walk away. I hate to say this. I know. But this is such a good it's piece good to of the episode to see him worse. go across. The yeah, they like the Beavis. They like the exactly. Beavis. It could really bring him out of his shell. <laughs> he's an only child. And he's what? Good for him to be around the coffee. Yeah. <laughs> I love the animation Beavis on that. It's hilarious. It's so good. <laughs> he's on the counter. I need Tippy for my bubble. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Dang it. Yeah. Mom, Dad, we gotta do something. We know, sweetie. We know what we have to do. We need to start listening to you better. Bro, are you this oblivious? Hey, Beavis. We hear you. I'm going to I like how it too. stops for that one and second. we're always here if you and your friends want to rap you. about TP and bong holes or substance abuse or just whatever. Are you threatening me? What? Do not enable that not behavior. All, man. <laughs> going, going, going. Oh, God. Broccolini. <laughs> uh, broccolini it's so cringe. Bungle. It's so accurate. Broccolini. <laughs> broccolini. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> Hell yeah, butthead. <laughs> He's just like, this is payment, so they never come back. Well, I just love how they're dragging it through the grass. Like, this is such a good garden. Right, <laughs> right here. Really bungle. Broccolini for my bungle. And it's like, I knew he liked that broccolini. This family is in a completely different show where it's a sitcom that <laughs> <laughs> and That's the kicker. I yes, totally so forgot about that. <laughs> Respect my bunk. Oh my god. It's like the family is like in this completely other show where this ending morality scene where they all come together and figure out you know like the end of like a full house episode. That was everything it needed to be. Yeah. That was everything. Like for a like Cornholio return, I don't know if that could have gone any better. Oh yeah. There's oh, so yeah. many again, there's so many that theories as to how it all started. There's so many theories about like what's gonna go from here. <laughs> <laughs> that might have been why they didn't make him go Cornholio when he's eating all that sugar before, because it's like if they were wanting to like have like this finale feel like bigger, right. they might have saved it because it felt like this was like the first maybe finale. 
maybe in the history of Beavis and Butthead where it was like the season <laughs> kind of felt like it led up to the sequences in it. Yes, and that's what we were talking about yesterday is that like for a Beavis and Butt, like for example, what we were talking about yesterday, uh, the previous season, it just kind of ended with another episode. Where this one, again, it feels like things were put into motion where it feels like they have I- ideas now. They, like again, the previous season was like, all right, well, let's test the waters to see how this kind of delivers. Yeah. And then it did so well. And so they're like, all right, let's take this serious. We have ideas that we didn't want to come out the gate with in case we, you know, it just didn't deliver. That's what but I'm now thinking. we have that, we have that confidence. So we want to set a backstory with Anderson. We want to set up this, we want to like give more lore to this other dimension. And we want to like, bring in new characters for the like actually a lot of world building and deepening of the characters of Beavis and Butthead seeing new aspects of them this season it's, it's showing so emotion we didn't think they even <laughs> had <laughs> yeah it's so fun seeing like watching a season and having it feel like it's canon yeah it really does. <laughs> it's taking it in a more interesting place that makes you even more excited because I think that's what maybe made the beginning of the season confusing at first and everything felt like a little like off and we're like, what is this? And we're seeing these extra sequences with Anderson and it's like, yeah, this is interesting. And then as it's played out, like we, it's, it got like, yeah, around mid-season, it was really hitting its stride. And uh, and it felt like canonical, like you talk about, even before hitting this episode. But then this episode hits, and then it really brings the whole season together. Uh, you know, I feel like it's like, oh, the whole thing makes sense, and they were kind of building up to this, and there is kind of a cohesiveness and uh, uh, to what they've set up. And so, and it was more experiment. It was more of a risk. So yeah, I think you're right that they did the more stereotypical setup uh, structure for the season nine. And then this season, they're like, okay, that was popular. We can now maybe get away with being a little bit more experimental and trying some things. And so I think we're right. on the money with that. And and that's what has me so excited. Is it's like, again, season 10 or season 9, the most previous season, it just felt like, like a revival. It didn't seem like it was anything that was like forcing itself. It didn't seem like it was going anywhere. It was just new episodes. This one seems like, like again, there's so many story, like, like things set into motion where you're like, okay, well, this kid Cody, is he going to be the new steward? I want to see more of Anderson's backstory. We're getting more of this other universe, and it's like and we it, want it to see like, more of other characters like Todd and Dari and all these kind of yeah, side characters. You... And we finally get to a slight tease, but at least we finally got a little something. But that at least gives a tease that they That's could finally expand and bring them in because if they have them representations of them in this. That means there could be more of that in the future. Because again, in the last season, we got like the Stewart episode where he gives them the kidney, and I it's love like that it feels like I they found it. their footing. It <laughs> yes. seems like they have enough to work with to go to a season three, where it's like obviously, like we were saying yesterday, these came like back to back. Like this is in the course of like six months or whatever. It feels like they have enough to kind of like sit back and like come up with ideas. They have a ton of routes to go in. They have a couple successful seasons now. They got that Do the Universe movie that was extremely successful. So mm-hmm. it seems like they found their their footing where I can see this going on for another couple of seasons. It seems yeah. like they have enough to work with. And it's exciting to, to think about that and, and like this day and age of Beavis and Butthead. Yeah, what's great is it's like, I don't see like everyone talking about being like huge, but it's like getting watched enough that I see enough talk about it that it's like getting enough traction to where I think like, and the budget's probably cheap enough that they might be able to keep pumping it up for a while. And with how Um, successful it is, they might, again, they might give them more of a budget. They might give them more to work with. Exactly. Like obviously with this revival, a couple of things that we've like, you know, noticed throughout the seasons is like the animation. It's much more sharp. They're doing a lot. Been more. some great, great it's flourishes so I've seen this good. season. <laughs> like it feels like again, it's not just like for fan service. It seems like, be- like Mike Judge was genuinely like, I want to make more Beavis and Butthead. There is more story to tell. Yeah, that he actually cares that. Uh, yeah, he's not just doing it. Yeah, um, and that's kind of like, like what we were talking with like the uh king of the hill revival that's um supposedly coming is like yeah. again mike judge whenever he's working on something you're even saying that he's like or i think i can't remember if it was you or someone else but like he's actually working on a new series and it's like whatever he's hard like he's working on it seems like 
it's something that he genuinely wants to do. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. And so you've actually had quite the journey this season because you were like really kind of rocky and worried at the first three episodes. You were like, yeah. <laughs> At first, and now like, it's like your change at the end at how excited you've been about the canonical aspects of world building and how the finale ended up. Has, it's, it was like, uh, that's been quite the shift that's happened and throughout see, the season. And, that, and, that's, and that's such a cool thing to look back on now because like in, in the beginning, like you said, I was like, oh, that revival season we got, that was just lightning in a bottle, man. It, right, it was one right. and done. It was, <laughs> they're out of ideas now. That was it. They did a really successful movie, a really successful season, and they didn't know when to stop. But, like, mm -hmm. as it went on, I was like, well, wait a minute. The stuff that I wasn't, like, really feeling at first, I see it now as, like, a build-up to something. I see right. it going places. I see that, you know, it, like, again, with the, with the war stories, and the very last one, just in episode 11, he was like, oh, yeah, but th that'll have to wait for another story. So I'm like, okay, there's, right. they're obviously re leaving room. They're just, Definitely. it seems like they're taking more risks and even if that means taking more time with stuff it seems like they have a better like idea of where they want to go instead of just cracking out okay new episode for the fans and they're coming up with like new running kind of jokes that's taking advantage of this kind of world building because part of the world world building is even setting up that like <laughs> there's like a bunch of different just like Re realities that a lot of these are taking place in, so they can constantly have Beavis and Butthead dying over and over, becoming a more reoccurring. I feel like more so yeah. than old episodes, that's becoming a reoccurring joke that they're playing with the multiverse, I guess, because that, that's, I think, why they wanted to do, do the universe and found it on these two smart Beavis and Butthead. So that they can do this kind of more, so literally do an expand, not expanded universe, but expand the universe and even like explain why Beavis and Butthead can die in multiple episodes and it be canonical because. Yeah, be because we have these new things, these like other universes now. So it's like, it, it gives them more to work with. They're like, well, if we kill off this Beavis and Butthead, it's fine because there's still other Beavis and Buttheads <laughs> yeah. around now. We, we, and... we had that confirmation. Is old Beavis and Butthead, like, the future of these, that time You know, so skipped? what I was thinking is, like, at the beginning or... of the abduction episode, they say something about how they went, they, uh, were at another planet where they were, uh, like, they were studying old Beavis and Butthead. So, I think that old Beavis and Butthead are in another universe. The, where they I, did a I, time jump. It's, like, them going normally. Yeah, but they haven't obviously normally. confirmed that. They haven't, like, really made that right. clear yet. So again, I think that would like, make more sense for Anderson also. Yeah, because is Anderson right Anderson doesn't see them, huh? Um. Does, uh, oh wait, no, he does. Stolen, Valor, Stolen, Valor. Stolen Valor. Valor. Yeah, yeah. So when he sees them, because I was questioning that, I was talking That's to people odd. in the comments, and I was saying maybe the old Beavis and Butthead aren't the time skip. They're in another universe where it's just. They grew and, old to that because they don't need to have the time skip in that version. And that's of always, and, and, and I've always thought about that too because obviously in Beavis and Butthead do the universe, there was that time jump where they come to 2022. Yeah, exactly. And so it's like, well, are they still there? Right. Or, yeah, yeah, so I'm thinking the, the main Beavis and Buttheads, I guess the ones that don't die in the episode are the main ones we're following, and that's the time jump ones. And then the old Beavis and Butt, I think they didn't time jump, and they're I feel like they're in the same possible time, but old. <laughs> right, and and see, and that's another thing that like like I was saying earlier, like there's things that may have not worked with me right away, but now it feels better. Like for example, I've noticed you, that with you and with me as well, where yeah, like, like I wasn't sure about, but they grew on me, and I really started to enjoy the direction. Like, for example, do the universe, I was like, oh, God, of course the big multiverse thing is is huge right now. Of course, right. Beavis and is going to get into that. But now I look at it, and I'm like, wow, that actually went somewhere. Yeah. That actually paid off in something original and genuine. More so in season 10 than season 9, too. Yeah, and it's another thing I want to talk about that we were discussing yesterday is, like, seeing the expansion of, like, Beavis and Butthead as people. Like, we're seeing more emotion from them. We're seeing different sides of them. That's that one of my favorite and surprising parts of the season. Yes. <laughs> Especially seeing Remorse from Butthead. That was one of the most shocking. It's, it's something <laughs> that, like, I didn't know how to feel about it. Like, I respected it because it was new. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm like, it doesn't necessarily feel wrong. It's just a new side that I'm happy I'm seeing, finally. Yeah. <laughs>
So, I mean, just as a revival, it's weird. I feel like season nine feels more Beavis and Butthead-ish, but this feels more mature in a story-driven canon way. Yeah, that was that one. So this season that I really enjoyed where, like, I wouldn't even be laughing that hard. I just really liked and appreciated, you know? So it's funny to be able to watch Beavis and Butthead and even, like, be really enjoying it when it's not making you laugh your ass off, you know? (laughs) <laughs> yeah and that's like an, an interesting thing is i was like both seasons this one and la- and uh the most recent one they had me excited for the next season in different ways like with the uh previous one before this i was like okay that felt like beavis and butthead i want to see more yeah. but with this season it's like okay it's a di- it's grabbing me in a different way but i'm s- again still excited for the next season because now i have stuff to be excited about you know, I, I want to see what happens with Cody. I want to see... Yeah, there's things to latch on to. Plot. There's <laughs> yeah, actual the, threads. You feel like there's more to. to tell. Yeah. <laughs> you kind of, you kind of like, have reason to be excited instead of just like, oh, cool. More Beavis and Butthead. Right. <laughs> so it has... That's what... Because so they easily could have done that, but that's what's turned out to be special about this season. Because we thought that that's what we were going to get. We thought it was just going to be more and that it was going to be kind of B-side versions of last season's episodes. Yeah, these, these, were, these were the ones that didn't make the cut. Yeah. And then it just... Right after we said that, it just started changing direction, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it just threw you for a loop and you're like, wait a minute, this is all starting to add up now. Yeah. It, it, it It's... <laughs> It it just it, it's baffling because it makes you think like how hard at work they really are with this revival. Yeah. And it makes me so hopeful for the future of not only this, but again, Mike Judge, you know, with whatever he's doing with with King of the Hill, yeah. with this near series that he's doing that's coming out soon. It just it has me so optimistic about that. Yeah. And that there's like it's interesting to even have a more to even say that. There's like newer seasons of Beavis and Butthead that are more thoughtful than you would think. <laughs> yes. So again, like we were saying yesterday, it just feels like they're going to take a little bit of time. It doesn't yeah. seem like it's going to be like again the end of this year. We're going to get like a teaser or something. Yeah. I feel like we'll get that renewal confirmation pretty soon here, but I wouldn't expect to see this new season. You That's know, it's going to be a bigger gap. It's like if this was just all Beavis and Butthead, it's like okay, well they can just come up with some episodes and you know release them whatever but yeah. this one it's like okay well which like if they have us anticipating certain story pieces yeah so it's like they're definitely going to take some time especially with these coming out back to back with the movie uh, and i kind of want them to too because uh, uh yeah i'm gonna put more them... thought into all this stuff i'm definitely okay with them taking a bit more time on execution yeah like i would i would love it if my judge were to like see this video and be like wow people are taking this much into consideration about this season <laughs> yeah. like I'm, I'm telling you mike like i hope he's judge seen because it's like the fandom we've tried to like hone and rein in the fandom around our channels because it's like we can't find it much anywhere else like on youtube and everything like that so we've been kind of like the forces trying to like so yeah, gather everyone around and have fun with the new seasons and everything. So. I would love, I would love for this to be like a gateway for like other people to like, you know, talk talk about Beavis and Bud. Like, I would love to see 100%. this fan base get revived and you know, and grow again. Yeah, yeah. that's even what I why we've been doing Daria because I feel like because we talked about yesterday about how. People are either love it or hate it, and people, a lot of people, are just like the characters are boring, the animation's boring, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's there's like, not enough fart and dick. I feel yet. like <laughs> that, like Daria, will be lost to history if someone doesn't like keep some like it alive a little bit. And so that's partly why I'm doing it. Is one, it's like I don't remember any of the plot I, plots of the episodes. It's like I remember kind of the characters and the vibe of the show, but specific plots. So it's cool to like rewatch it again because it's been so long. And two, it's like, I love the show, and I just want it to not get, like, lost to history and keep it somewhat minorly relevant in some people's yeah. lives. You, know? you want to keep it alive some, yeah. you know, to, to the best you can. To the best of my ability, yeah. <laughs> and, that, and that's the thing that, like, we were also talking about yesterday. I'm like, even just, like, you, you know, playing, like, the Sega Genesis game and, like, you know, Beavis <laughs> and Butthead with Guar. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not just, like... Like, obviously, you know, as a fan, I'm like, when I heard about the revival, I'm like, okay, I'm definitely going to, like, check out this show. But, like, I didn't know it was going to be, like, a continuous weekly thing and that, you know, we were going to, like, develop a relationship over this. We were going to meet 
like a fan base and really have this community. I didn't know at all that it was going to turn into that. Yeah. Like, how like, can you expect that? It was a really cool snowball effect. Like I said, I it told really you all the, the story of how it was convenient that those episodes were coming out because my equipment got destroyed by lightning and it kind of started right. where I didn't know those episodes were going to do well at all or it's like those first couple like people still complain about and it's like because I I was just making my normal shitty ass fucking videos that no one ever watched. I maybe had like 300 or like 600 like not many subs when I made those first couple like videos, and then, and because I was the only one doing it, it's like also and that's why also all these people came out of nowhere, and then I was like, so, and then I was having fun with all these people in the comment section, like, oh, this is crazy. I'm actually getting to talk to people about all this shit, and then I found your channel. We started talking, and the whole thing just like snowballed, and it started with like a bunch of happy accidents and things that seemed like bad at the time, but ended up yeah. turning out better in the long run. So. And that's like what's so great is like I, I feel like that's what is like the most important thing with like with like YouTube with me. Is that people expect to go onto YouTube and just like, you know, oh, it's a fun job, it's an easy job, and it's just going to go from there, and, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's just going to be easy. And it's like, you know, I, I think about this, know. I think that's why so many people quit, is that they go into YouTube with, like, these expectations, and they, you know, set themselves up for something that, you know, is, you know, again, they, like, have these expectations, and it's just, you know, it's it's not you know, you can't predict how the platform yeah. is going to go all the algorithm's time. algorithm's insane, and the best thing to do is just do the things you like and are interested in, and at randomly, exactly. videos will hit, and blow, like, you'll have temporary spots where your channel will blow up, and you'll gain a big chunk, and you'll be kind of steady coasting, and then some random thing will hit, and it's just like, just kind of like, focus on doing whatever, and you'll randomly, because you can't predict it, and sometimes it's like, you'll try hard in video, and no one gives a shit, but the video that comes out like shitty, everyone's watching it, and you're like, "Why is this video the one?" And it's so hard. And it's so hard to like not be biased and like critique yourself too, yeah. like be your own worst critic. But the, like, see, that's like the good, the the thing that's really cool. But also the thing that sucks is like, for example, when I was like, do like a with like the very first episode of this revival, it was one of those things where it's like, as I'm like reviewing the episode and I'm putting it up, like that half of me is like. No one is talking about this revival. Yeah. No one is gonna watch this. But then again, because <laughs> I was no one else the is... same thing. <laughs> yeah, and so I'm like, and then like I put up my video, I'm like, sure enough, no one is talking about it, no one's doing videos. <laughs> but because me and you were the only ones doing videos, we kind of like became like the kind of like standouts for like Beavis and Bide content on YouTube. Yeah, so and it's like, that's what we've kind of like been known for now. That's how we've kind of developed this, this bond and everything. Yeah. And what's so cool is that we all do vastly different stuff. It's like, I do reviews, he does breakdowns, you do reactions. Yeah. So it's like, you get like a little bit of everything. And that's, that's so cool how it just came full circle. Yeah. It's just, oh, yeah. it's such a great thing. It's like you said, just like a big snowball effect. <laughs> it really is. But it just turned out, this is just like, the more it goes on, the more fun. And then it's led to us being able to finally collaborate. Exactly. And it's just like, and it's so easy. We are able to then just hook up again this morning and go, <laughs> and, uh, go way and, yeah, smoother. It's, it's, it's like we were saying, like, yesterday, like, me, like, you know, for example, me and you started talking in the very last season. And it was just like, it was a matter of time where it's like, look, we're the only ones at the time before he started doing the breakdowns it was like we're the only one time well only ones on this on the platform doing this kind of stuff like it's just it's bound to happen it's just yeah. it, it's that crossover that you know it's gonna happen it's so good that it's like we have this kind of like circle now we have this community yeah it's it's so awesome to see that just off of like beavis and butthead so another thing real quick about this season I want to bring up that I don't think we talked about yet, but I've talked about with people in the comments, the cutaways. People this season have noticed like the cutaways this season a lot of times have been felt more Mike Judge commentary a lot of time than Beavis and Butthead. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And so I I've do. talked Absolutely. I've discussed We've that even with talked people. About that. Yeah, because that seems also a, an experimental shift where it's like during those sequences, he's in that more of just like a voice to like have some fun at maybe like express some things, you know, whatever. He's like wanting to say about this, that, but in a funny, like silly kind of way. Yeah, we were talking about that exact thing in the last episode. We were like, how does, how do like the cutaways that they like choose to have, how do they find them? It's obviously got to be something that like, 
Mike Judge is familiar enough with where he's like, okay, I got to keep this one like like written down because yeah. I, I got to talk about this. And the only way I can get away with it is if I'm like, if he wants to roast something, it's like, well, if I do it as Beavis and Bite, it comes off fine. So yeah. it's like, I can get away with it like that. Yeah, so exactly. it definitely seems like you said, like, for example, in the original seri- series, it was just like, oh, we're going to pick a music video and just comment on it as Beavis and right. Bite. This one feels, like you said, like more tailored to like Mike Judge specifically. Yeah. Because when you think about it, we've gotten variety. We've gotten ASMR stuff. Yeah. We've gotten music videos. We've gotten YouTuber stuff. And we've gotten mukbangs. Uh, and it's paying off. Like, like that was like the biggest like worry to me is like, I don't want Mike Judge to put all this effort into this revival and not like... And like, you know, just for someone to be like, okay, well, this episode didn't work for me. It's like, I want him to understand that people like the diehard fans, they're following like they see yeah. it. Obviously, this isn't the first revival he tried back in like 2011. Right. And that would just it just didn't work out. So it's like, I feel like he's been wanting to do this. He just needed to find out how to do it. Yeah, he's given it enough time. He's given it enough thought. He gave he's, it another 10 years or so. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, look, this has to be like, even if the revival ended right now like even if they announced like okay we're we're pulling the plug right like good run dude we got two yeah really it would good be seasons. satisfying regardless <laughs> yeah i mean obviously we're getting a third season but it's like even if it, we just got these two seasons in the movie it's like good fucking run dude yeah like like good job whatever so, he did between the last revival and this one like paid off <laughs> yeah definitely so it's like it's just it's such a good time to be a beavis and byhead fan it really is